So we're still prepping for module two today. Tomorrow will be preparing us for module two. Yesterday's lesson, Monday's lesson. So being able to classify numbers, I would keep reviewing that. Those four properties, I would keep reviewing those. Your warm-ups that are your word problems and writing equations, I'd be reviewing those because on Friday, it's a short day, you will have a quiz. It will be an open note quiz. You can use your notes, your warm-ups, your practice problems, your homework, anything that you have for math, you can use. You will not be able to use your phone. You will not be able to use your friends. Fair enough, fair enough. What? Well, listen, I'm asking fair enough. I don't really care because Mrs. Armstrong said that's fair. Yeah, see, Addie, is that fair? See, Addie has more say than all of you because she's fantastic and she's our TA and She's wearing a necklace. Is that a fuzzy neon glow stick? Fuzzy neon glow stick. Okay, so I had a marker that was working. I'm gonna try, we're gonna see how this goes. So here's what you're doing right now. You are going to oh my God. simplify. So everybody's going to take five minutes, which shouldn't take this long, to simplify these two problems. Three sevenths, you can absolutely use your calculators, but I need to see work on paper as well. So it can't just be done in your calculator. Three sevenths plus two fifths. And one and three fourths minus two Eights. So, on your own, show your work. Can you do these two problems? If you can't, that's all right. But these are a skill that Engage New York wants you to know. So, my guess is most of you will need to refresh your, and that's what today is going to be. Some of you will not. Some of you I see are just looking at your paper like, oh man, don't know how to do this. And that's why we're doing this prep. We should be done. We should be done. Or started. One or those one of those two. We should be done or at least started. <laughs> I know, I know, I worked out twice. 
twice yesterday. Yeah. Time. So, let me put this nicely. We, as a collective we, don't know how to do this. No, no, listen, listen, listen. Some of you are doing really well, okay? But, again, the reason we haven't hopped into module two yet, and I want you to understand why I like Engage New York. I like the way that it flows. They expect you to remember a lot from previous years. It's, it's pause. Mrs. Armstrong just tried the lemon bar that I was saying. It's amazing. Did you have it yet, Eddie? You should, you should, you should do that. Yeah, you should do that. But, guys, this is going to play a big part in our unit for Module 2, Module 3, Module 4, probably up until Module 5 is when we're going to stop using fractions for a while. But you need to know how to add and subtract fractions. So again, I love my new board. I'm going to keep trying. If it doesn't work, just let me know. When we add or subtract fractions, it is a different process than multiplying and dividing fractions. Because when we multiplied it and divided fractions, it did not matter what our numerator and denominator were. It does when we add and subtract. So what has to be the same when I add or subtract fractions? Jason, can you say it loud for the video because I want to hear your beautiful voice. Did you guys all know that Montana and Jason won the award? It's on video now. It's there forever, Jason. Go ahead. The denominator. The denominator. So the denominators are not the same. Some of you are going to be able to say, I can find the least common denominator, the LCD, okay? But most of us are going to do it this way no matter what. Seven, five. I'm gonna come off to the side and I'm gonna write three sevenths. I'm gonna write two fifths. You are doing this right now. Yeah. To get a common denominator, we multiply 3 sevenths by the other denominator. So I'm multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 5. That leaves me 15 35ths. Are we able to see that with this blue? Are we all right here? Okay. Again, so if, if something goes funky with this, let me know. What do I have to multiply to fifths by? Ten. By seven, the other denominator. And that gives me 14, 30, excuse me, 14 30 fifths. So now I've got a problem that says 15 30 fifths plus. 14 35 When we add or subtract fractions, the denominator does what? Very good thing. Stays the same. So it will stay 35. We only add, we only subtract the numerators. 15 plus 14 is 29. I cannot simplify 29 35ths. 29 is a prime number. Yeah. There is nothing besides 1 and 29, and it gives me 29 25ths. Give me a left arm flex if you got it correct. There you go. <laughs> Good. Okay. First step in number two before anything else. Before we do anything else in number two, what do we need to do first? Rock. So, Rock, I love that you said convert. So we are going to convert this. What is this whole thing called? Come on, I, I need a bunch of hands. Everybody knows this one. Everybody knows what this is called. Kaylin, we're going to convert the mixed number into improper fraction. I take my denominator and I multiply it. That's four. I add it to my numerator. So now I have seven fourths minus two eighths. Okay, so again, the first thing I would check 
when I'm looking at a problem like this and trying to get denominators? Does one denominator go perfectly into the other denominator? Can four become eight? Yes. How? Come on, come on, come on. I need more hands. I need more hands. I need more hands. Come on, come on. Carter. So how am I going to get seven fourths to be eight? Not four. You were, you were right the first. You said divide by two. Well, that would be getting this backwards. But let's multiply seven fourths by two. Could you simplify this and divide it by two? Sure. But more often than not, we're going to multiply to get our denominators the same. So I multiply both. There it is. Now it's not showing up. Multiply both by two. Why is this not? Technology, wonderful. Seven times two is 14. Divided by eight. Minus two eights. Everybody with me there? Okay, so now I'm gonna subtract. We keep, oh my gosh. We keep the denominator and we subtract. 14 minus 2 is then 12. Am I done? No. No. Hands, why not? Hands, why not? Go ahead, Cindy. By what? Chris, what can I divide both 12 and 8 by? Let's go bigger. By 4. They, they can be simplified by 2, but the greatest common factor is 4. That leaves me with three halves. And then I had somebody say, Mr. H, do you want me to leave it as an improper fraction or a mixed number? I'd like both. What does three halves become? One and one half. One, two goes into three once. Okay. Goes in once, that leaves me with one left over. So either of these are absolutely fine. Tana. Yes, if you simplify two eighths down to one fourth, that's fine as well. Okay, but more often than not, because I just kind of made it up off the top of my head, it'd be like three eighths and then you wouldn't be able to simplify it. So we need to get into the habit of changing the denominator. Okay, yes ma'am. Um, is it okay if I did, I can't remember back to Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay, questions on these two? I'm going to show you two more and that's it. Because again, the goal is getting the denominators the same. I want to give you time to practice because I don't want you to have homework. I want you to have classwork today that's going to be checked. So erase all. Yes. Let's go a different color. Let's go. Okay, so here we go. 3 minus 12 sevenths. That's one problem. And then let's go 5 ninths plus 3 20 sevenths. <coughs> So again, I'm going to give you three minutes. Try this on your own.
Okay. I know that wasn't a lot of time, but those of you who've got it, you've got it already. So now, there is something funky about this one. I have a whole number, which we know, actually, it's what classification should three be in? So if I'm classifying the number three, what classification should three be in? And this is going to be part of your quiz. Carter, it is a natural number. Any natural number can be a fraction, because right now we have a natural number and a fraction. We need to have two fractions. What fraction do I have for the natural number three? Montana? Three over one. Very well, let's say three divided by one, right? So really it's three divided by one minus 12 divided by seven. You're absolutely correct though, Montana. So now I've got a fraction. How do I make this denominator one to be a seven? Multiply it by seven. So I'm gonna multiply this by seven, this by seven. That gives me 21 sevenths. Give me a thumbs up if you got that one right. Just the 21 sevenths part, okay? You have to turn your whole number into the other denominator. So our natural number has a denominator of one. You're multiplying by the other denominator. Minus 12 sevenths. So again, denominator stays the same. 21 minus 12 should give me nine. Or one and two sevenths. Give me a pat on the head got that one right now. Not give me a pat. You pat yourselves on your head. Good. Questions on this one? Okay. So, listen. I, I can't stress this enough. You need to first check to see is one of my numbers a factor of the other one? Is it able to go into this one? Because if not, if you just multiply 9 and 27, you're going to get gigantic numbers, and we do not want gigantic numbers. Okay? So, Zane, what do I need to multiply one of these by? Just the 9? Yeah. So, you're right. 9 can become 27 by multiplying it by 3. So, Zane said, hey, I'm multiplying this by 3. But to get that fraction to be equivalent to it, to 5 ninths, you have to multiply by the same number. Hey, we've done equivalent fractions, you know when? In all of our proportional relationships. Multiplying by the same number? Yeah. So now I've got 15 27ths. Equal, not equals. So that's going to be a big plus sign. Plus 3 27ths. I don't know how to just erase that, so... That's my plus sign. I'm learning, guys. I'm learning how to use this. So that now gives me 18 in the denominator. Try again, Mr. Rich. Okay. So this is a plot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So that gives me 18 27 This is not done. 1 plus 8 is 9. Is 9 a multiple of 3? Yes. 2 plus 7 is 9. Is 9 a multiple of 3? Yes. Which means these are divisible by 3. That gives me 6. Nice. Are we there? Am I done? Yeah. Brennan, why not, man? Because you can still divide it by three. It's still divided by three. How do we say that in math class? What are you doing in this step? Fractal? We're multiplying. I mean, we're simplifying. Yeah, we're simplifying. 
and that leaves me with two birds. Questions, concerns? Yes, Faith. You could. You absolutely could. Questions, concerns on this? Okay.